iron in the soul. What's up, YouTube? This is your brother, Iron and Soul, back with another video. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my content. Well, let's talk about something that I'm observing in the hip hop community. There's been this kind of a new wave of positivity. And, you know, it sounds, it will sound crazy to not support that, to not support um, a stop the violence campaign, to stop gang culture within the community, to change things, to all have this big group hug. But the reality is, it's much deeper than that. And, and what I see is our race, African-Americans, we're really showing the whole world that we are under the power of this system. We basically will fold and do whatever they tell us to do. So when it was popular to promote gang culture and violence and, and drugs, that's what we did. Even if we were not living, you had a lot of people who were studio gangsters. That's where that word, that's where that term came from. There are people who were promoting a lifestyle who knew nothing about the streets, who were not from the hood, who had not been to prison, who had not shot guns. And not saying you should, you should be proud of any of those things, by the way. <laughs> Let me put that out there. But you had these studio gangsters who were promoting that because it was safe to do so, and it was lucrative. There was a potential of fortune in that. Well, we all have cell phones. And everyone is seeing the heat that gangster rappers are under right now. We got phones. We see what's happening with Young Thug. Elders in New York City, K Flock, Cash Nova, the death of so many rappers over the last three or four years. And so there are many people who are seeing it right on the wall and they sincerely want to change. I'll give you that. There are those who sincerely are growing up, who are maturing and realize, you know what? There is another way of life. There are those who evolve and who grow and mature and develop and choose a new path in life. And then there are some who are just flat out phony. They, they are afraid because they see what is happening. They see all the RICO cases, the murders, the deaths, and now we're, we're switching sides now. And all of a sudden now, you know, we shouldn't be promoting this and, and stop the violence. Isn't that what NBA Youngboy said? Stop the violence. Well, I'm sorry, NBA young boy, Lil Dirk. It's not that simple. It's not that simple to have a group hug. There has been bloodshed. There has been much damage that has happened in our communities. And it's not their fault. It's not all their fault, by the way. They, they, they play a part in it. I, I guess if I could give an honest assessment of what Gaysha Rap does, it adds fuel to the fire. Gaysha Rap doesn't create the fire right that is my honest assessment of the black community gangster rap does not create the current crime element we see it's like what gangster rap is literally someone walking by seeing a fire and throwing wood at it so it does literally gas it up i will say that but the fire is created by a number of elements the fire is created by poor families let's talk facts reality single income mothers they're fatherless homes, low-income families. And, that not, and if you're a low-income family, this is not a slight against you, by the way. It's not a slight against anybody. I'm stating what creates the ghetto, what creates the crime elements we see in our communities. Gentrification. Gentrification, excuse me. Housing discrimination. Mass incarceration, which is nothing more than another form of Jim Crow or segregation. Um, <laughs> slavery, to be honest. Modern day slavery. Racism. Sometimes it could be systemic racism. Microaggressions that we experience as African American people of color. Limited opportunities. Living in communities where there are very limited resources. Poorly funded schools. You know, th these are the, the, the issues that create the fire in the ghettos. And what happens is through the music, entertainment, it indoctrinates and it, it conditions the minds of young people to think a certain way, to act a certain way. So these are the various elements to create 
what we refer to as the ghetto or the trap, which is just that. And it and is interesting that it's very similar in some ways to what we see has happened in some African countries. You had Europeans who would come to some of these African countries by force would enslave the people, in some cases murder them, cut their hands off, take the precious jewels, the treasures, the diamonds and rubies back to their countries, their native land, and kept the people poor. And, and this is what often happens in many ghettos. You have various races who come to the black community who do nothing for the community, by the way, <laughs> and never will, because we don't require that, because we, we don't have a backbone as African-American people. We only, African-Americans, we only stand up to each other. That's been my observation. We're big and bad with other black people. That's about it. But we don't stand up to anybody else. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Pause, that part. We check everybody. We check, our, we check no one but ourselves. Another black person. We'll, we'll, we'll jet down them in a heartbeat. Put them in their place. Murder them. <laughs> Talk about them like a dog. Call them ugly, dusty, dirty. You know, we have such a nasty spirit towards each other. And it's so obvious if you have any type of common sense. And this is why some black people don't like to deal with other black people, to be honest. You know, I'm going to be honest. And I'm, as a black person, there are a lot of black people I just can't deal with. Jealous hearted, toxic, got an attitude, can't have a regular conversation. Um, in some cases, just unintelligent. And this is what I mean by that. I know it sounds condescending, but, you know, when a person asks you questions and you think they're trying to talk about you or they're talking down to you, that's a sign of a lack of intelligence. Intelligent people ask questions. If someone asks you questions, they're not challenging your manhood or womanhood. They're trying to understand. Okay, That's how you gain understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. You ask questions. And so we have a lot of dysfunction within our community. So to all of a sudden now just use rappers to stop the violence, it's not that simple. Are we going to change the school systems? Are we going to try to somewhat make the wealth um the economy better for people of color are we going to somehow try to um broaden or sorry not broaden excuse me bring in that wealth gap between white families and black families of course not none of that's going to happen so the wealth gap will remain the same the other issues will remain the same and just getting a few rappers to say stop the violence to me is really sarcasm that's that's a joke it's going to take more than that. And I've noticed a number of other underground rappers are jumping on this bandwagon. All of a sudden now, and I'll tell you what's going to happen, guys. You're going to have a lot of people now going to want to be Christian rappers who don't even believe in Christianity. <laughs> but it'll be a safe way to rap and to make money. Watch what I tell you. You're going to see us. You're going to see a lot more people. Blueface Girlfriend, that's what she said recently. I saw a post about Blueface Girlfriend. She's going to start doing Christian rap. That's coming too. I see that wave coming. They tested the waters with, with um, Wayne and Drake and them all, all of them on their song. God did it. This is what this is all about. They're going to try to jump into that God lane now. Because it's going to be a safe space for them. Because right now, the gangster rap space ain't safe. Talking that gang gang stuff can end up in you in jail now. Various cases. So, once again, I'm not against people changing their ways and having a new life. You know, I'm a, you know I'm all for that. I'm a prophet of God. I want people to change. I want people to grow and develop. I'm all for that. That's exactly what I did. Okay, so I would like to see other people do the same thing. I changed my life. I was completely rehabilitated. Dropped my gang affiliation, got into the word of God, went through school, got married, worked, etc. Continued to educate myself day by day, reading, reflecting, journaling. So I'm all about that self-improvement, you know, gaining that knowledge of self and of God and bettering yourself. I'm all for that. But what I'm concerned about is what I see in some cases to be disingenuous on one end and if, at best just not really effective method. You cannot have all of these murders and all of a sudden now says come together and have a, a peace treaty. There has to be more than one conversation. There has to be several conversations. There has to be something done to make that wrong right. You can't just say the right stuff. It's not how that works. That's not how that works, brother, sister. When something bad like this happens, like the ghetto, what's happening? The murders, the crimes, the drug, the poverty, the loss of so many lives. People don't want to hear talk no more. There has to be some action. So if we're going to start, start this, stop the violent stuff and, you know, we're going to promote positivity. 
Okay, let me see it in the community. Let's see it. Let's see that when you see an older black man, you see an older black woman. Can you show some respect? Probably not. When you see another black man, do you smile when you see him or do you mean mug him? So don't give me this garbage, but don't stop the violence. If we continue the same, because I'm going to keep it to you. I'm going to, you know, this is me. I'm going to keep it always stacked with you. As long as we keep the same nasty, toxic attitude towards each other, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear no stop. I don't want to hear no stop nothing. I don't want to hear stop anything. I want to see some action. Will our schools improve? Will we treat people, one another in particular, better? Will we stop sleeping with our friends, girlfriends, and talking about it online? Oh, yeah, I went there. Yes, I went there. Will you stop talking about how you're getting your, your, your girlfriends, your, your, this is for your woman, your, your, your home, your home girl, you're getting her, her man, you're in bed with her, with him, rather. All of this foul stuff we're doing, this is what we do to each other. Consistently dishonoring each other. Consistently disrespecting each other. So that there is a lot of work that we got to do. We, we got to like literally revamp. <laughs> we had to almost recreate our whole, our whole culture, our whole way of treating each other. This culture of, of glorifying sexual sin is off. This culture of, of, of talking about your daddy all the time, because that's, that's another big thing happening right now. I see it all the time. Everybody talking about their daddy all the time now. I don't see nobody talking about their mama. Like, like mama a saint. <laughs> Come on. Come on. If that was the case, if mama did everything right, why, why are our kids turn up so messed up? If mama did everything right, why is our community so messed up? I'm asking you a question. That's one of the problems we have. We have a community when no one can be told what to do. We're hard-headed. We know everything. We can't respect authority. We can't respect, I said what I said, I ain't scared of you. We cannot respect authority. We cannot respect the leadership. This is why we fail everywhere we go. Because you're not going to succeed nowhere except for with your mama with that, that dumb stuff. Talk about what you're not going to do. You go to work, they tell you what to do. The police gonna tell you what to do. That white man gonna tell you what to do. But when another black person tells you that, you can't receive it. This this is a problem in our communities. We have no respect for each other. That's my honest assessment. And that doesn't mean every individual. That's common sense. You know, you're smarter than that. But collectively speaking, collectively speaking, the general consensus is we don't respect each other. You are basically almost to a degree guilty to prove innocence as a black person with another black person. Those murders don't just come out of nowhere. Those murders and crimes and the cheating and the killing and the sexual sin, that comes from a lack of respect for each other. So when you're sleeping with 10 people like that, that shows lack of respect for those women as well as yourself. That's what that tells me. You have limited respect for yourself. You're not no player with 10 girls. You, you, don't, you don't respect yourself. You're out of control. You lack discipline. And this lack of moral fiber is killing us. Babies everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? All this domestic violence, depression, suicide rates, drugs. This is why everybody on drugs right now. Come on now. <laughs> this is why everybody popping pills, drinking, getting high. Because we're doing stuff that's not normal. We cannot do this type of stuff and expect to be happy. That's not how it works, folks. When you're constantly living like that, that creates depression. I want you to understand that. I want you to know if you are consistently in sexual sin, violence, dishonor, disrespect, no prayer life, you're not connected to God, you're not connected to angels, what do you think is going to happen? Death. And death, my brothers, my sisters, isn't always physical death. Let me say that again. Death isn't always physical death. Death can be depression, suicidal thoughts, discouragement, fear. This is these are the signs of demons and demon activity. Fear, panic, paranoia, um, confusion of mind. And this is not a judgment, my brother, my sister. This is not a judgment. I'm trying to teach you something. This is what's happening in our communities, and we are falling apart. So, you know, with all the, the issues we have our way as black people, with all the realities we face, all of the limitations that we face by default, it is in your 
in my best interest to be as moral as possible. I'm going to be honest with you. That's that's your superpower. Keeping your pants zipped up, ladies, keeping your skirts down. <laughs> yes, I said that. <laughs> Reading, reflecting, taking care of your health. That is your superpower, my brother, my sister. That's how you're going to grow in, this, in these last days. You're not going to go forward with wickedness in these last days. Let me tell you that. In these last days, sir, ma'am, madam, you want to go forward, you will need, mark my word, this is your big brother talking to you. This is Brother Iron, your big brother. You will need moral fiber, purity, a good conscience, right? Honesty, kindness, diplomacy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Knowing how to respect people, working hard, sometimes working two jobs. That's how you're going to make it. You're not going to make it popping them pills every day. I'm talking to you. You're not going to make it, you know, sitting back, blowing bunts every day. Chiefing. You dig? Drinking every day. How your mind? High as a kite. High as a mink coat. That's not going to help you, my, my boy, my girl. You have to let go of those vices. Now, for you biblical people, let me give you a, a Bible verse for that. Let me take you to the book for a second. This is Big Brother, Big Brother Iron, right? Let me take you to the book for a second, right? The Bible says it this way. Lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset you. And run with patience. What? The race that's set before you. So if you want to run this race with patience, you have to lay aside those weights. All of those things are weights I'm talking about. All those are weights. So... Once again, I, I am, I'm going to make this crystal clear in this talk. I am definitely for change in the community. I would love to see it. I would love to see the violence stop. But I know that it is so bad. It's going to take more than talk. It's going to take a lot of action. A lot of meetings, a lot of sit downs. Some apologies exchanged. Okay. With this, with this, is what a, this is the real work. A lot of bad things have happened. You got to say, I'm sorry. I sold drugs. I'm talking, not me, but I'm saying, and, and give you examples. Let me talk to you for a second. I'm going to talk to you. I sold drugs, and the drugs I sold killed your mother. Huh? You owe that person an apology. I slept with your baby father. That was wrong. Oh, I know y'all want to hear this. I don't care. I ain't scared of you. I slept with your baby daddy. I know that was wrong. Give me no, I want to hear no, no positivity bull crap. I want to hear action. Did you apologize for your wrong? Did you make the wrong right? You understand? You took someone's son from them, someone's father from them, someone's daughter from them, someone's girlfriend from them, wife. Talking enough. It has to be some action. So the action is going to require conversation. It's going to require money. It's going to require you ready for this one? Key word here. Change. Not just no talk. I'm not talking about no doggone stop the violence and talking crazy within the next the next day. <laughs> that's mockery. That's sarcasm. That that's making a mockery of black pain as a black person. I'll see if what it is. And, and really trying to hide from the pressure coming your way you see what tiny people are on with you so all of a sudden now you want to jump into the, the positive arena now you want to be a pastor <laughs> now you want to be uh, 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 a community activist come on nothing wrong with that by the way but don't try to do that now because you're scared let's keep it all the way a thousand let's keep it real what's the motive what is the motive for all this quote unquote positive talk I see on Instagram now all this positive talk on Twitter and Facebook. Granted, some are sincere. I told you that already. I know some of you are not going to like this. Some are sincere. I understand that. And that's great, by the way. And I'm with them. I'm with you. You're sincere. I want to work with you. Let's, let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's do some work. But I'm going to be honest. I'm, not, I'm no fool. I'm an OG. I ain't no fool. Some of it ain't sincere. Some of it is just speaking off of fear and trying to duck the energy that's coming the way of Young Thug. The energy that's coming towards Cape Flock. The energy coming towards Casanova and that death spirit that has taken down so many of these men. 
I mean, I, I would lose time listening to all of them. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not even going to do that right now. But the most recent one was, of course, Gangsta Boo. That death spirit. This is what happens with sin. The wages of sin is death. Right? So if we consistently speak on these things, what do you think is going to happen? I'm just being truthful. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And when you speak on life, life comes forth. When you consistently speak death, come on. What do you think is going to happen? So this is just food for thought. I hope this is of value to you. This is your brother, Iron Soul. Thanks for listening. God bless. Peace.